Hey everyone, I'm Rick and welcome back to Maple Syrup Gaming. So today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual. What I really want to talk about today is the release of the PS5 this year. So for any of you that keep up with gaming news in the faintest, it really shouldn't be a surprise that the PlayStation 5 and the next generation of Xbox Series X and Series S are coming out in this holiday season. But we're not going to go over launch windows and all that. What I really want to talk about today is the fact that, in my opinion, although these new generation consoles are coming out this year, 2020, and more specifically, like I said, holiday season 2020, is most likely not going to be the best time to be picking up these new consoles. And as the title of the video suggests, if you're really looking for a new console for this holiday season, well, in my opinion, once again this year, the best pickup is going to be the Nintendo Switch. Now, I already see major heat coming to me in this video, so there's a couple of points I just want to make that is probably going to answer some of the questions for you out there. Uh, number one, I just want to make sure that you understand I'm in no way saying that the PlayStation 5 is going to be a bad console or is not going to be a successful console. I'm just saying that in my opinion, for 2020, it most likely is not going to be the best pickup for someone looking for a new gaming console. And also, as we go through the arguments that I'm going to be making, you're going to be seeing that a lot of them hinge on one of two facts. Obviously, if I'm suggesting that you buy a Nintendo Switch rather than a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, more specifically in my case the PS5, because in my opinion that is the most interesting of the two consoles, I'm also... Uh, assuming that you don't already own a Nintendo Switch. Because obviously, if you already own a Nintendo Switch, well then the suggestion to pick up a Nintendo Switch rather than a PS5 really doesn't work. However, it doesn't negate the arguments I'm making against picking up the PS5. It just makes the suggestion to pick up the Nintendo Switch in place of it basically moot. And secondly, this won't be true for all the arguments, but some of them will also a sort of assume that you already probably own at least one console from the previous generation. And most likely, a lot of the people looking at a PS5, I'm assuming, already probably own a PlayStation 4. Now that assumption won't be true for all the arguments, but it will be for a couple of them. And the one last thing before we get started, Obviously, if you disagree with me, I really want to hear from you down in the comments below, so feel free to go ahead and we'll possibly have a discussion, just try to be courteous. And lastly, obviously, for some of you out there, some of these points won't resonate, and even maybe none of them, and I'm not saying that no one should be picking up a console, just that in my opinion, a vast majority of people most likely uh, would be disappointed probably with an early purchase of this console. So let's get started with maybe one of the most obvious points which will be, in my opinion, actually being able to pick up this console in 2020. Because we already know that the first wave of pre-orders was basically totally botched by PlayStation. And basically, we're not even sure how many consoles are actually going to be able to be produced for the holiday season. Now, I know PlayStation came out and said that they're going to have enough consoles readily available. But obviously, that's always what they're going to say because they want people pre-ordering these things. However, at the same time, for you and even especially any parents out there maybe watching this video and that want to pick up a console for their kids this year, trust me, the console that is probably going to offer you the hugest challenge and the most frustrating experiences trying to pick up for this holiday season is most likely going to be the PS5. And I know that there's been Nintendo Switch shortages pretty much every holiday season, but the advantage for the Nintendo Switch is you can actually start hunting for it right now because it's already on the market, it's already available. And even if you want a portable only console, the Switch Lite has solved a lot of the availability issues for the standard Switch. So really one of the most basic and obvious first points I want to make is really if you don't want to be stressed this holiday season hoping to get that console, having to run out to stores at the last second maybe even, uh, the PS5 is probably not going to be the console you're going to want to shoot for this year because it's probably going to be in massive demand and unfortunately it's going to be probably one of the hardest consoles to actually pick up before Christmas. 
Now, let's jump into the second point, and this one is one of actually the bigger points overall, in my opinion, especially for me as a gamer that really wants a vast library of games. Uh, the second point I want to make is that most likely the development cycle for new games on the PS5 is going to be a lot slower than what we were used to in the past for a first year of a new console launch. I mean, there's a few really interesting launch titles that are going to be available for the PS5, but at the same time, I'm not sure that in the first six months of 2021, there's going to be a huge follow-up of secondary titles once you've played through those like two or three major launch titles that are coming with the PlayStation. Now, once again, I don't think it's going to come to a surprise to anyone out there, but obviously the reason why I think this is going to be an issue this time is obviously because of everything that's happening out in the world right now. 2020 has been a horrendous year for game developers and basically even for gamers receiving vast quantities of new games. I mean, there's been some huge title launches, but that's what I'm pointing to is that the only titles that really went through their normal development cycles and were pushed out this year are the studios with the huge budgets behind them to develop those titles. A lot of the months this year were really empty other than for those couple of huge launches. You don't have all those secondary sort of hidden gem games coming out that we had in all the previous years. And I'm not sure that for the first six months of 2021, that's going to be changing. If the world gets back to normal, we'll see development cycles go back to normal, in my opinion, more at the end of 2021 than in the beginning of 2021. So after those original launch titles and those first huge games that sort of Sony has already announced, I'm not sure that there's going to be much of a follow-up before, like I said, the third and fourth quarter of 2021. And just to further push that point down, don't forget that development cycles have been rough this year, and that was developing for the PS4, which was a console that developers were used to developing for, already had all the tools and had almost no surprises for them. Now they're going to be developing for a brand new console generation with hardware that they're not used to, and we're expecting development cycles magically to come back to normal within the first six months of the year. I really, really highly doubt it. So that directly sort of goes into my point that if you buy the console in holiday season 2021 and you play through like two or three of the games that really interest you, you might actually run out of new games for that new generation like in the first two, three months of 2021 and have nothing to look forward to before the end of the year. Now, I'm not, I can't guarantee this. Maybe there's going to be some kind of huge push and games are going to start coming out in huge amounts. But I would actually aim more towards the development cycles of the games that have been withheld for the Nintendo Switch and that have been sort of pushed back to 2021, finally unblocking, than to the games that are being developed for the brand new generation, you know, getting back to speed in the beginning of the year. So that sort of leads into why I'm saying that the Nintendo Switch is probably going to be the console to buy if you don't already own one for 2020, because in my opinion, a lot of the games that were delayed from 2020 are finally getting back on track, and those will most likely be released in the quiet months normally of the beginning of 2021, and even we're probably going to see a lot of surprise launches in the holiday season of 2020, just because game companies want to cash in on that Christmas money. Now we get to my third point, and it's sort of related to the previous one. So assuming that I'm right even halfway on the fact that the launch cycle on the games in 2021 isn't going to be huge, uh, let's talk about the pricing. Now, the pricing of the console itself is very good. I don't think we could have expected more for a new generation console with everything they're including in those in that new generation. However, game-wise, companies are already talking about possibly launching games for the first time at a higher price, meaning rather than $60, they'll be launching games at $70. And obviously, for anyone who's used to gaming over the years, 
you know that what pushes game prices down is that basically once the games come out and newer games, shinier games are coming out, well, the first sort of wave of games drop in price to be able to keep pushing the sales. However, if not that many games are going to be releasing at the beginning of 2021, in my opinion, those launch games are going to stay expensive pretty much throughout the whole year. Meaning that each new game you're going to want to play, you're going to be have to reserving a budget between $60 to $70 most likely for any of those new games. Now I know there's a couple uh, sponsored by Sony that are going to be launching I think at $50, bucks, but that is not most likely going to be the majority. And a lot of the companies that are going to want to pump out titles in the beginning of the year, if they really push, like I said, the development cycles, are going to want to make that extra money that they had to push for the development back. And they're going to be wanting to sell those games at the maximum price they can for the longest period of time. Now, however, on the Switch side, however, if we don't only aim those first party titles that basically almost never drop in price, it has such a huge backlog of great games at every price point, meaning that if after the holiday season, we know that sometimes the budget is a little, you know, tight for the first months of the year, you still want to buy a couple of games here and there. Well, guess what? You can get some great games for $10 on the eShop. And even physically, you can get some great games at $20, some great games at $30, and every now and then drop a little bit more to get one of those first party titles. And even a lot of the new games that are launching sometimes don't even come out at the full price on the Switch. You know that the Switch is a console that is really, really good for those budget games. So just price-wise, as a gamer, and once again, as a parent, if you're a parent looking at buying a console for your kids for the holiday, and you don't want them bugging you every month to buy a new $60, $70 game, the Switch is most likely a much safer buy to be able to find some really great budget titles. And if you ever need suggestions, I even have videos that are specifically dedicated to like games that are 30 or under that are right now available to the Switch on my channel. And those are games that, by the way, are amazing. They're not low quality games, they're top notch games. But over time, obviously the prices drop because this isn't a new generation console. So once again, for the everyday gamer, being a first adopter of a new generation console, if you're not ready to drop the big bucks on the games, is most likely going to disappoint you once again. And then as I said, this is maybe one of the points where I said if you already own the PS4 and you don't want to switch, I would look at, you know, going into the backlog of PS4 games and playing those games that I might have missed rather than putting the money right now on a PS5. I would rather, you know, like I said, play some great games that came out on that previous generation first and maybe buy that PS5, like I said, at the end of next year. Now we're getting to my last two points and these are big maybes, okay? Because I'm basically extrapolating from what we've, what I'm already guessing about this new generation. Like I said, don't forget that the first year of a new console, a lot of developers are learning that new console. At the same time, like I said, with all the craziness happening in the world, development cycles aren't what they normally are. So unfortunately, I do think that, and I'm not talking about those first party great games that Sony are going to be sponsoring, like Bur the new Ratchet and Clank. Those games are probably going to be top notch quality and great. But you're probably going to have a lot of developers that are going to be tightening development cycles, cutting budgets, and basically releasing games in sort of a beta format. I know we're getting used to that in gaming, but unfortunately, I do think that 2021, especially for the new generation of consoles, is probably going to be plagued with more games like that that are going to be released in a semi-finished format and probably corrected later with downloads. Why? Because basically those companies can't afford to have those games up on a shelf not bringing in any money uh, to keep the development cycles going. So unfortunately, I think a lot of PS5 owners are going to have to deal with subpar launch games that are going to be basically fixed a month or two later. And, you know, when you're dishing out 60 or $70 for a game, figuring out that you're a beta tester really just feels bad. And the last point I want to make is that basically 
the first generation of a new console often has a few problems associated to it. I mean, over the last few generations, we've seen it happen time and time again. The Xbox 360 Red Ring of Death is probably the most known problem where it was corrected down the line with a second version of that the Xbox 360. And there is a slight chance that something similar could happen to the PS5, where in the first six months of its lifespan, people figure out that there might be some recurring problem with it. And as usual, generally within the following year to maybe year and a half, which lines us up for holiday season, probably 2021, Sony is going to be doing a re-edition if anything happens like that where a major problem is found and the newer version of the console won't have that problem. Meaning that the early adopters that probably paid more for their consoles are going to end up with consoles with maybe a slight defect in them. But this again is just a, an assumption, like I said. I'm just letting you know that it is a recurring problem with early adopters and the first generation of a new console and we never know what can be figured out uh, later down the road. And at the same time it sort of jumps directly to a like side issue. Don't forget that Black Friday tw 2020 is not going to have the PS5 really, you know, you don't expect any deals on the PS5. However, Black Friday 2021 expect huge PlayStation deals and not only on the consoles but most likely like I said those launch titles if you want to get a bunch of cheap games with a brand new console and be ready to go like I said 2020 is probably not the time to buy this new console but 2021 is going to be crazy and you know that if Sony wants to make their console work it's not the launch window that is most important. It's often the following holiday season and Black Friday deals that will sort of push the console to either success or failure. And basically overall, that's the point I'm making. I'm not saying don't buy a PS5. I mean, there is that argument, who should be buying a PS5 at launch? Content creators, honestly. Maybe I will be buying a PS5 in early 2021 if I decide to branch out and do a little bit of PS5 content. Why? Because you need to be at the forefront, you need to have those new titles, you need to have the hardware before other people. So content creators, yes, they should be buying a PS5. But everyday gamers, parents buying consoles for their kids, in my opinion, not holiday season 2020. Holiday season 2021 is going to be for you guys. But then again, like I said, all this is just my opinion. But I thought it was important to talk about it because I think a lot of people are getting swept up in the hype. And they maybe didn't think through the fact that this console launch is really not going to be like previous console launches in the past. Because of everything that's happening in the world and all the craziness right now. And if a second wave hits and everything, all production gets stopped again you could wind up majorly disappointed with that new console purchase. So, like I said, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Be civil about it. Even if you're responding to someone else's con comments, try to, you know, do it in a civilized manner. And as usual, I hope I, you all loved this video. If you did, please drop a like if you haven't already. And do subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of my content. If you like these opinion pieces, by the way, let me know as well. I can try to do more of them uh, from every now and then rather than just reviews. And as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.